This is a story about people, people who happen to live in a town called Santa Rosa, California, which is about 60 miles north of San Francisco. It's the story about a home for six young men who happened to be persons who had the condition of autism, their parents, a service club, a political party, a church that all came together to bring to pass a very significant community project. It was a project that involved a spiritual and emotional and physical experience for each of us that were involved. In one day, a house was repainted inside and out. Numerous additions were made to the interior to make life easier. A new lawn and a brick walkway were put in. And at, in a 12-hour period from 7 in the morning until 7 at night, a sense of community really took place. It's a project that can be repeated any place in the state of California. Benton House for me was a formative experience. It has instilled in me a, a deep and abiding concern for people with disabilities. It's, it's made my involvement with uh, people with disabilities, my involvement being a sincere desire to help those with disabilities, a lifelong commitment. It showed to me that uh, public-private partnership projects could be done successfully, that it really, all, all it takes is identifying a legitimate need or concern at the local level, and then marshalling the, the resources to, uh, to address that, that need. And um, I, I look for opportunities constantly where uh, the, the government and the private sector and the charitable sector can come together to produce some sort of community uh, benefit and, and address local needs. I think all too often we have a tendency to, to look to Big Brother to resolve our needs at either the state or the federal government level, when in reality the ability to address so many of our needs lies within us, within our hearts, if only we're willing to open up our hearts and, and to give uh, and, and to give generously. I think people would be rather amazed as we were in doing the Benton House project at the response of the community. There are many, many people out there very well-meaning and well-intentioned who want to get involved, who want to help, who want to make a difference, who are only waiting to be asked. And I know it sounds like I'm saying proceed on, on faith and faith alone, but faith is a big factor and doing a project like Benton House. Well, in the beginning, I think we thought that government should be the answer and the only answer. And we realized very quickly that there really was more that we needed to give and more that we needed to do within the community. By only using government as the answer, we found that we were very isolated and that isolation really was causing a lot of problems. It was causing burnout, staff turnover, low staff morale, burnout with the board and with the parents because we really didn't have the community support. And it was actually these problems and limited resources that caused us to take another step and to try something that was very risky for us, which was to go outside of ourselves and to do something that we hadn't done before, which was to ask for help. They wanted to help. The business community, the service clubs, the churches, other providers, they really wanted to help. They just needed to be asked. And the thing that I learned in this kind of outreach is that really it's a partnership. And what we asked for was not a handout, but a helping hand. And people are willing to give you a helping hand. And it was the way that finally we came, became fully integrated into the community. Before that time, we were in our own isolation. We were coping the best we could together. But until we reached out and we admitted that we needed help and these wonderful people in our community came forward to help, we really weren't part of the fabric of the community. And, and what I loved about it so much was the interaction between the clients, the staff, and the community members because it really was the best education we could have ever possibly done. Uh, they learned, we all learned so much. We're 
working with the leaders of the community, we saw a real need. We saw a whole area of our community that really weren't being taken care of as a community. Uh, it had been the time that the state had been taking care of these people and had basically let them go uh, out in the community. We saw an easy way, an easy approach to get them uh, in, a, in a facility uh, with people of their own and uh, a mutual kind of thing between the community and the, the politicals. And I think it worked out. Uh, we saw it come together, and I, uh, I can't be any happier, and I'm sure you can't either, of, of what really has happened. But uh, through Rotary and, and through some of my, my other connections, we s found it very easy. Uh, when we told them what it was about, uh, we came with some slide programs uh, to our Rotary and kind of went through an education process for ourselves as well as our members and it's kind of told the story and it was an easy it was re very very easy it all started with a budget and what what they really needed and uh, we had some key people go into the go into this particular house on benton street here in santa rosa uh, see what what the real needs were for instance the washing machine dryer what was a real need the linoleum floor was a need some kitchen uh, facilities they needed uh, we, we saw they needed some heat, so we had a, a heat stove uh, there, a ventilating system. We saw a need for some fans, some, uh, so for some air in the place. Um, and then, of course, the, the painting and the, uh, the work that went on outside, you know, making it a nice, presentable unit that somebody felt when they come there, it was a house that cared. I remember it took a lot of coordination, a lot of meetings, a lot of phone calls. Uh, it did actually start, it, it happened on one Saturday, but it actually started prior to that. We had to get a hold of electricians and, and uh, floor people and ordering fireplace inserts and fans. And it was a lot of activity, a lot of, uh, like I said, phone calls and making contacts prior to the event. And the day itself, it was quite busy. It was, there were so many people here, you couldn't keep track of them. They were the, painting all over, the offices, the house, people laying floors inside the house, putting the ceiling fans up, and delivering bricks outside and doing landscaping. It was quite, quite an event. It was really something to have everybody there. At the end of the day, we actually had a ribbon cut cutting ceremony, and we had uh, an assemblyman, supervisor, mayor, and some of the parents and board members of our agency. And it was something. So I'm sure yeah. everyone who came out felt really good about painting the house alongside of an autistic person who was, you know, maybe they helped them a little bit or just getting to know an agency such as ours and the clients that we serve. We are part of the community, and most people, I don't think, own that. They don't own the fact that a residential home in their community is part of their community. We're not uh, these strange people that moved into their neighborhood and we don't belong there. We do belong there. Our, our clients are the children of other people who live in the community. It's just a different lifestyle. It's, you know, it's a different group of people living next door. It's interesting because the more you get to know about autism and are around autistic people, the more you realize, I think, that there's a little bit of autism in everybody. Many times people are not aware of the needs of people such as myself and our guys. Recently, a wonderful organization that I had spoken at, um, I was talking about our need for our guys to get vocational training in the community. Well, one of the gentlemen called me two days later offering jobs for some of our guys to work there. So I think that there are a variety of ways that organizations and people can help in the community, and I would like to see more projects put together. It was a, a, a good example of what community involvement can do to uh, help organizations like ours to um, 
um, accomplish some of the things that we can't do ourselves because of basically of lack of manpower and uh, our uh, devotion to what to the problems of taking care of the young men here. That's our, that's the main focus of California programs for the autistic. So anyone who can, or any organization that can come along, like the uh, Rotary Club in this case, uh, and uh, uh, help to uh, uh, do what they did. Uh, we, we were and are still are very grateful for that sort of help. And we would always welcome um, uh, any groups or individuals who would be interested to uh, do this sort of thing for us. It was a wonderful experience. Uh, a typical example of, uh, maybe it's a, uh, um, don't want to use the word uh, corny, but, it, but uh, of uh, community involvement in, uh, in a local project like this. It made, it made us feel good that, uh, that they would take the trouble to uh, do something like that. And uh, we wish that uh, it would happen oftener because uh, our needs continue in so many ways. Uh, but for that particular occasion, uh, it, uh, it was very, very satisfying to be involved in that. And then I think almost by accident, uh, uh, the people in Benton House said to me, you know, if this house could be repeated, we could, we could double what we're doing. Well, that was a challenge to me, and I think it can be said that I accepted that challenge and said, we will go ahead and we will get a house so that Benton House could be repeated. Benton House is a very nice place, and it's in a good neighborhood. But I thought we could make a better step by going into a very, very much higher rent district, if you want to put it, and put him there. And I must say, in all candor, we never had a single complaint that I know of in doing it that way. But again, I think it underlines, Tom, what I'm trying to say, namely, that we want people treated with dignity. We see them as made to the image and likeness of God, and if they are, then we don't say they deserve the best in the sense of live like millionaires, but they deserve a very decent environment if we can afford it. And uh, frankly, we could and did. One of the things we've discovered is if we show the people needs of others, they're very responsive. And if they know that the, uh, the, uh, their donations are going almost directly to the the people are part of the program, they feel much better about it. That's just one of those psychological things. And this, again, is one of the advantages of a cooperative venture with the state. And really, when you come right down to it, it's politically smart, it's uh, economically smart, because it brings together two sets of resources, and all every politician has an opportunity to uh, say, you know, we've done great things, and they have. So once the track record was established, uh, we became uh, one agency that was able to open up a number of things, all on almost all of them on cooperative ventures. And I think the realization that in our country, where we have lots of people with a lot of money, they will give it if they see that it's a valid cause. And they will give it for those things that they like. And one of the things we always have to uh, do, I think, is challenge them to give. And that's been one of the characteristics of our, our country. When Benton House came and made their application, the committee was excited because here was a new opportunity for us. So I made a field trip out to the house. I was not totally unfamiliar with the program. And we decided, OK, we'll give them 9500 plus in grant monies solely for the bathroom renovation and for the carpet. Even if we can't fund them through the block grant process, the housing authority gets the major funding. And we refer groups to other agencies. If we can't help them, we'll refer them on to another agency that can help them. So whether or not the funding is there, at least they get doors open and they get referrals and recommendations, which will open more doors later on. A lot of planning was involved, uh, a lot of time spent figuring out exactly what was needed and how we were going to be able to accomplish it. The, uh, 
the fun part was the day that we were there because while it was a full day of work, of physical work, it was also a day where you could see from start to finish what your hard work accomplished. And uh, we saw the finished product, we saw the house painted, we saw the new flooring, subflooring and the new little linoleum put down in the dining room, which was one of my jobs to do. It's the first time I've ever done subflooring, I'll tell you. It was like an old barn raiser, I guess, where we came together and we ate lunch and we, when we finished one project that we were assigned to, we went along and, and helped with uh, something else and everyone participated. Everyone had a good time and a sense of accomplishment was, uh, was really rewarding. I was happy to be a part of the Benton House project. It's a fond memory in my mind and uh, it really does prove the point that people helping people is what makes this world go around. It was good for us, it was good for the clients that lived there, it was good for the neighbors that saw the improvement, it was good for parents to know that we care about their kids uh, and, that, and they're not forgotten by a community. Uh, it was good all the way around and it was fun to sit back, stand in the street and look at what we had done through that day and be very, very proud of it. The Benton House Project brought together people with developmental disabilities, their parents, the staff, and political, business, and church leaders from the community of Santa Rosa, California in a common purpose. It's the type of project that can be replicated any place in the state of California, and I strongly urge you to look for your community leaders who do care. It does work.